Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to do a quick roundup and summary of Rocket Lab's Q2 results. We just had the earnings call, which I did live stream. Thank you so much for everyone who attended. It was a lot of fun just to be able to interact back and forth with the chat in real time. This one I tried to stay more quiet during the earnings call, so hopefully I didn't you know, uh, interrupt and cause you to miss any information. Unfortunately, I did have a technical issue with my camera towards the end, so I wasn't able to uh, finish it off, give some thoughts and in final discussion, but uh, that's kind of what we're looking to do today. And uh, obviously, you know, this video will be a bit shorter than the hour and a half long earning call if you don't want to go through that whole thing. By the way, thank you so much to everyone who did uh, donate via Super Chat and subscribed yesterday. Definitely wasn't expecting it, but it really did make my day. So thank you guys for that. Before we get into the data from the earnings call, if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. And with that out of the way, let's dive into Rocket Lab's Q2 results and Q3 guidance. So I figured I'd just start off with the stock. Uh, after hours, well, as we were watching the earnings call, everything was looking good. The market was reacting quite positively to the results. We saw a huge spike in the after hours, all the way up to about 7.20 here. But for some reason or another, it didn't last. We opened up down on the day. Yes, the overall markets are also down, but it's kind of an underperformance really from Rocket Lab. A uh, bit of a head scratcher here, but I think all of us who've watched the stock long enough know on the short term, some of these short term moves just never seem to make a lot of sense. We have successful launches and then and often the stock price drops the next day. It's just, uh, you know, I, I don't try to pay too much attention to the short term moves of the stock because for me, at least, this is really a long term game. We're talking five years plus. And as long as the underlying company is still executing, then I'm happy even if the stock over in the short term is failing to react to that. And then I'd just like to go over some of the biggest news items of the call before we start looking at the actual earnings numbers because those are a little bit dry. So I'll leave those to the end in case you're not interested. Although really for any investor, I would encourage you to look at the numbers because it's extremely important to the uh, valuation of the, of the company. And really it should just be important to any investor. So, um, Big news was that we've had 10 new launch deals signed since Q1 of 2023. So during the quarter and I guess, you know, since the end of Q2, we've had uh, 10 new launch contracts signed. This is great news. I have been watching that order backlog get a little lighter over the past couple quarters. And management has been saying for a while, yeah, but it's it's lumpy. And then we'll have big quarters where we sign new deals and the backlog will grow. That's kind of what happened here. And I love these uh, multi-launch deals. Not a lot of one-offs, a lot of multi-ones. Black Sky was actually just announced right before the earnings call. Absolutely amazing. Love to see five launches in a single deal for Black Sky. Rocket Labs launched for them many times before, and they're obviously happy with how those have turned out. Cinespective as well. We heard about those previously, and we have government launches and one haste launch. These are more, you know, private secret sauce, confidential stuff that we're not allowed to know as much information about, but still very important to Rocket Lab to maintain those customers and uh, grow that haste launch business. Talking about haste, uh, just mentioning that the total addressable market for the hypersonic uh, version of Electron is about $1 billion. That's not insignificant when you consider the overall launch for the entire world, the overall launch market for 2022, 2021. Most people peg it around $10 billion and obviously small lift rockets are much smaller component of that than the heavier rockets. So a full 1 billion total addressable market for these hypersonic launches from Electron, definitely very important and uh, glad to see that they're already up and running. And then we had some news about Neutron, which was pretty interesting. Uh, Peter briefly mentioned uh, the updates that they post on their website, basically saying that a lot of these changes to Neutron that we just saw and we talked about were actually made months ago based on customer feedback and as part, part of their process for development. So I'm thinking hopefully this doesn't mean there's any delays. This update did kind of catch me and a lot of others off guard because we thought the design was kind of locked in and they'd already been working on making their molds and things like that for their tanks. So the shape 
did look a bit different in this and we were worried, well, does that mean those molds are garbage and they got to start again? It doesn't look like it. They just never got around to updating us on that and uh, everything is still good in terms of progress on Neutron. I do wonder though, they talk about the landing leg change, which I've already gone into detail on, as well as the Hungry Hippo fairing, which isn't actually new that it's down to two. It's just kind of the, the drawing has been updated on that. They didn't really talk about the overall shape and we all discussed it a lot, how it seemed a little bit less chubby at the base now, if you will, a little bit more uh, uniform. And I do wonder if that is actually the case and the design has really changed much or is just kind of how the artist rendering came out. Let me know if you think there actually has been a large change to the tank sizes since the previous drawings or if that's something we shouldn't really look into much and it's just a rendering thing. Uh, I think it probably has and uh, a lot of this is based on customer feedback. Clearly a lot of customers want to use the barge landing, meaning they want the full performance out of the rocket that they can get, as opposed to return to launch site, which was originally planned to be much more of the focus. So pivoting a little bit towards the barge usage is Rocket Lab. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, whatever makes customers happy, whatever drives more business and makes more sense, I'm happy with as well. So uh, I think these changes look pretty cool overall myself. And then I loved this picture. This is a stage two tank and looks absolutely massive, especially considering it's just a second stage, which is much smaller than the first stage, obviously. Uh, Peter Beck standing there for scale, kind of fun to see. Uh, the test stand is also complete for this stage, so they should be able to take the stage out to the test stand, start doing some pressure tests simulating putting it under real world conditions they will they call that qualification testing which is testing the overall design of the tanks and making sure they can withstand those pressures and the design works later on is acceptance testing when they test the built articles the assemb the manufacturing line articles to make sure they are up to code and can handle the stresses as well also nice to see that the Launch Complex 3 pad Earthworks has commenced. I was talking a lot about that with some people in the Discord lately. We're keeping an eye on the satellite images via Planet Labs, and it didn't look like they had really broken ground on the, um, the landing pads and launch pads for Neutron. So glad to see that they've started that now. Hopefully everything's still on track for that 2024 launch. Uh, and I just thought this was interesting to show for scale, like how big this really is. Obviously this right here is the second stage and uh, in the picture on the right is what they showed us the second stage looks like. So even though there's a lot of talk about Neutron being too small, it to put it in perspective, this is still quite a large rocket. This is, you know, probably what, 10% the size of the overall vehicle. So definitely, definitely a really big rocket, especially compared to the likes of Electron. Uh, then the Archimedes engine, there's been a lot of people worried about the progress on that. They feel like Archimedes should be further along in testing and development in order for Rocket Lab to be launching Neutron next year. It's kind of one of the biggest worries in terms of staying on schedule. Nice to see that they do seem to be meeting their build tests and milestones. Uh, you know, avionics hardware has been built, testing underway, thrust chamber development is on schedule and all this kind of stuff, like to see it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we're still good there for a test article to be assembled and tested in 2023, which would be essential to get an actual article to the pad in 2024. And then there was a lot of interesting notes in the Q&A. Uh, gotta hand it to the analysts. I think they did a pretty decent job this time around. Sometimes I hear questions from analysts and I'm like, okay, I've heard this question answered 10 times before in various conferences and mediums. Why are we asking this again? It was pretty good overall this time, I think at least. So we still do expect the Rutherford to refly later this year for the first time. That will be an exciting milestone, already seen it hot fire after going for a swim in the ocean. Uh, space systems revenue we did see was a little slower than expected. That was kind of the one downside of the quarter. Uh, they say they should be making up for that in Q4. It was just the revenue recognition didn't really happen as fast as they were hoping. But, you know, everything, all, all the contracts are still in place. And for Electron Recovery, they expect the last major upgrade in order to enable that on an ongoing basis to probably be around launch 45. Right now, we're on launch 
40. So we're really getting really close to having Electron kind of ready to be fully operationally reusable, pulled from the water. Another very exciting milestone for the company. Can't wait to see that. Definitely should be seeing that by the end of the year. Uh, Neutron peak development spending should be around Q3 of next year. So still expecting that Neutron spend to continue to grow. And they're still planning for 15 launches this year. There were some worries that, uh, you know, we've had some delays. Some people were wondering if we may only end up getting off 14 launches or something like that. They still think they could do 15. Hopefully that really does happen. Uh, Questions on Solero margin improvement. There's, uh, as we all know, after the acquisition, their margins were a little low, more like, uh, I think they're more like the 10 to 20% range, and they want them to be at least 33% range. And they think they're still getting through that backlog at a good pace. The new contracts coming in will be higher margin, and they're pretty happy with the progress on the Solero front. And then the first stage tanks for the Neutron, which we haven't seen, we only saw those second stage tanks. They do expect qualification testing by the end of the year, another event I can't wait to watch. Uh, it sounds like Neutron, although it's a very tight development timeline, I think it may be possible to hit that 2024 launch date. Again, I won't be too upset if it slips until 2025. That's kind of the the nature of the rocket business, unfortunately. And then looking a little bit at the numbers here. So in terms of revenue and gross margin, I thought it was pretty good. We had a guidance before the end of the quarter of 60 to 63 million. They hit 62 million, so kind of on the upper end within guidance, definitely not a miss. I wouldn't call it a beat, but it's solidly on the upper end of their guidance, which you do like to see. That's 23 million for launch and 37 to 40 for space systems. And we do see launch just barely a tad light of that 23 million number, but pretty much in line, space systems 39. So, you know, both well within the guidance ranges. And uh, the nice thing to see in terms of gross margins, I uh, really was watching for this, we were given the numbers 14 to 16% going in for gap gross margins and non-gas gap gross margins were 22 to 24. We really beat that. We had 31.8 for non-gap and 23.5, I believe that says, for gap gross margins. So solid beats on the margin front, which is just good to see because obviously we need those margin numbers continuing to rise in order to reach profitability. Now these margin improvements were driven in part by the average selling price of Electron rising. I don't know if you remember in Q1, we had some tests where they would launch Electron and they were gonna try to recover it and they didn't fill out the rocket completely just because they wanted to get that test done. But their average selling price has been going back up to the 7.5 million number for an Electron launch, so good to see. And another big item, the backlog was, at the end of this quarter was $534 million, which increased by $40 million, very important. We had been seeing that backlog decrease over the past couple quarters, and great to see that you know new contracts coming in to beef up that backlog to back above the half a billion dollar mark. Where, pretty healthy numbers for the company for sure. A lot of reasons for this on the launch side of the business, going from haste to other launch providers dropping off and Rocket Lab getting those contracts, whether that be Astra or Virgin Orbit. So uh, good news on the launch side, as well as an uptick in space systems bookings. So I'm pretty happy with these numbers overall. Of course, space systems, perhaps a little lower than I'd like it to be. It does seem like our revenues for space systems will kind of miss what I expected for the year when I originally made my long-term growth projections for the company. I'm going to go over that later on, see if I might need to adjust my projections and where, you know, the trajectory of the growth is and where it will be in five plus years, which is because I like to look out on a long distance. Uh, probably do that maybe at the end of the year once we have those final numbers in. Ending the quarter, the cash balance and uh, free cash flow metrics. I liked these as well, pretty pleased with them. So cash consumed from operations was actually down 19 million sequentially. Uh, nice to see that that is down. We can see in the charts here, 2020, uh, Q2 versus Q1. Capital expenditures down, 
gap operating cash flow much less negative. However, we do have this big $16.1 million hit. That's obviously from the Virgin Orbit acquisition. It's uh, under asset acquisition and business combination. So that's more of a one-time thing. If you back that out because you don't expect it to be ongoing, we're looking at the uh, cash consumption to have significantly reduced. Again, something uh, that is important as the company tries to continue to march towards profitability. Obviously, with a company that's not yet profitable, you also do want to keep your eye on their liquidity and their balance sheet situation. So we do see that they still have 419 million in cash and qu cash equivalents, as well as marketable securities uh, for the period ending Q2 2023. So it's still a decent chunk, chunk of change in the bank. Management did say that they remain confident that they can get through and become a profitable company with the amount of capital they have available although they are still open to uh, securing more favorable loan terms and things like that in the future. And then uh, financial outlook for next quarter, almost as big as how they did this quarter, is how they think they're going to do next quarter. Looks pretty good to me as well. So revenue ranging from 73 to 77 million, whereas in this quarter just passed, we had 62 million. That's pretty solid growth quarter over quarter. Space Systems revenue will be 43 to 47 of that. They're currently planning for four launches in the quarter. Uh, revenue on those are about $30 million. And then gross margins to range between 21 to 23%. That was about 23% this quarter. So pretty much staying in line on the gross margin side. In terms of adjusted EBITDA loss over here, we're looking at 10 to $14 million adjusted EBITDA loss. That compares to $20 million this past quarter. Of course, that stands for earnings before interest, depreciation, and amortization. Just another way at looking at how much money the company's losing, not including, you know, interest and things of that nature. So overall, I was quite happy with the quarter. I was pretty happy with the guidance for the next quarter. I'm looking forward to year end when we get the final numbers and I can really compare them to my projections for the year, see, see where I was off and uh, how my projections for the future may need to change based on that. A little bit surprised the stock is down this morning, especially after being up so sharply in the pre-market. Um, not too upset about that though on the short term. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to comprehend market moves and uh, you know if it does drop back down low I may just have to add more shares not something I'll get too upset about the only real reason I would get upset is if the actual performance of the company disappointed me if they weren't really growing as much as I was expecting or things of that nature that's what really would upset me not the performance of the stock on a short-term basis so that's pretty much fine. Let me know what you thought about the quarter down below. What are you most excited about? I was quite happy to see the Neutron upper stage and quite happy to see that they're on track with that Archimedes testing. And obviously the 10 new contracts they've signed for Electron is absolutely amazing. Very excited to hear about that for Rocket Lab. Seems like Electron is really on track to push towards those two launches per month numbers in a couple years and really hit that its stride getting a gross profit margin of close to 50 percent can't wait for that and then around the same time you know a neutron will be coming online it will have a growth period before it can really become uh, profitable for the company but once that does man things will just be hitting on all cylinders really excited to hear it neutron will have similar profit margins to electron except you know much bigger because each launch will be almost 10x an electron launch well maybe not 10x but you know perhaps 8x an electron launch so the numbers will just get so much bigger but the percentage you know still 50 percent gross profit thank you guys so much for watching let me know if you think there's anything i missed that's really important down in the comments below i will see you guys in the next video hope you have a great day bye for now yeah.